This is an example from a writer who just finished first grade and is preparing to go into second grade. In this piece, the same writer put a tremendous amount of effort into doing his very best work. He's got a few ideas of some things that he plans to do in the summer, but there's not a real sequence for the piece. When I get a writer started, I always like to use a personal narrative to help get the thinking and planning process started. So with this little guy, I shared an experience that I had just had traveling to Disney World, and I showed him the collection of pens that I got. I had him choose one of the pens and decided that I would just tell him a little bit about the story behind why I selected the pen. As I did this, I did just a couple of real quick sketches, very simple, but enough to help him see the details that I had planned on sharing when I decided to start writing. He made an instant connection to traveling to Disney himself and actually looking at one of the pens, decided to share a little bit about an experience he had had on a particular ride. So this is his plan as he sketched out some of the things that he was thinking. What's interesting is he uses this plan to jump right in and start writing, and he does so with incredible ease. Wow, well you do, you remember an awful lot. Can you remember how that ride made you feel? Um, I... Can well, you draw a face to represent maybe how you felt? Like crazy? That's good. And you said Mia was too scared to go on. Well, every time she goes on, when the Yeti part comes up, she's just um, hanging her head so she doesn't see it. Oh, and that's the part where I think it comes up like on the wall, isn't it? Yeah. Very cool. Well, you know what? We just did a quick sketch here, and I have to tell you that sketches help me think about what I want to write. And so I've told you about my special pen. I'm going to write about it now. Can I do that? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to ask if I can use that pencil. That's kind of my favorite pencil. Okay, I've got this paper that I like to use. It gives me a lot of spaces in between. And I'm just going to think about what I'm saying. Um, and this is about my special pen, isn't it? Okay, so when I went... There you go. So I was able to use my picture to real quick there write something. Do you think you could use your picture to write about what you were thinking? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll give you, I've got some paper here for you. Now, I'm going to try not to talk at all because I want you to be able to think about what you want to say. I don't want you to worry about how anything is spelled. I just want you to take what's in your head and let it come out on the paper. Okay? All right. You go. Good. You must have more to say. Like I have been to Disney four times and now I'm doing that. I should have done it right here. Oh, do you feel it should go up there? Mm -hmm. you, okay, you know what? That's why I have all this big space. You can squeeze it right in in between. So you can write it in between. Okay, so check this out. Okay, write what you need to. 
it's a little more paper. on here. And then all we gotta do is cut it out, tape it back together. I'll go get some tape. Okay. okay? You go ahead and continue adding on here, and I'll go get my tape. Do if you're basically eight, like I'm turning name two months. Mm hmm. Say almost. Would that work? Mm hmm. So it was very easy to take the information that this writer felt needed to be inserted into his piece and put it exactly where he felt it needed to go. The cutting of the draft paper is a strategy that I like to use often yes. to help a writer just do that. However, I also intentionally designed my draft paper to have a lot of space in between for this type of work to take place. Once I have students doing this when we conference, it's something that they actually do independently on their own. Okay. when the materials are available have. for them to use. Excellent. Super impressed here. Let me tell you all the great things I see going on. I love how you're giving your readers nice spaces between your words. Makes it way easy to read. Okay? I also noticed that you capitalize Mia because you know Mia is an important name. And you seem to have a good idea about punctuation at the end of the sentences. Especially this kind of stuff. This tells me that you're saying it with a lot of feeling. So, super impressive. Off, I was looking off of here for that one. Absolutely. That was really smart thinking. Whenever you've got a word you need. Yep, right there. Everest. Yeah, smart thinking. It's great to use those resources. Love it. Okay, now you've come up with a great idea. The idea came out really well. Almost too easy there, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. I flew right out. So here's the final piece after having an opportunity to revise and edit with a student. I showed him how to revise with a purple pen and we talked about some of the words that he had written. He was concerned about a spelling of many of them, but I was thrilled with his progress at this point. We also talked about how strong his conventions actually are and the importance of capitalizing I as a word. Overall, I think the planning process really helped him comfortably pull this piece out because he was able to write it in less than 15 minutes.